Have you ever imagined going on a round world trip? It's a dream for all travel lovers, including myself. However, most people struggle to make this dream a reality because of money, time, or both. But here's the good news. In a small German city along the North Sea, there's a museum where you can experience a round world trip in only a few hours. Don't underestimate this place just because you think it's not a boring museum. It has a whole lot more to offer than meets the eye. Here, they not only have exhibits and pictures from all over the world, but they also actually replicate each country's weather, temperature, humidity, and even smell from an African desert all the way down to the freezing South Pole. Yeah. Oh, it's cold. So cold. You can immerse yourself in a realistic trip around the world surrounded by local foliage, fish, and insects. In this video, I'm gonna share my experience at Germany's immersive museum, Climate House. Let's get started! The museum is located in Bremerhaven, a beautiful port city in Germany. It's not well known among foreign tourists, but its neighboring city, Bremen, is quite famous. Yes, it's the model for the town musicians of Bremen, a German fairy tale by the Brothers Grimm. Bremen has a lot of tourist attractions as well, so we decided to start the day here. The first place we went to was Bremen Market Square, which lies in the heart of Bremen. The square is dominated by the city hall, which dates from 1405 and stands as a part of UNESCO World Heritage Site, together with the Roland statue. On the western side of the city hall, there is a landmark of the city you can't miss. A statue of Bremen town musicians. The bronze statue created in 1953 stands at the center of Bremen as a tribute to the popular fairy tale by the Brothers Grimm. According to the story, a donkey, a dog, a cat, and a rooster set off on a journey to Bremen in search of a better life. There is actually a superstition about this statue. Rubbing the feet of the donkey will bring you good luck. On the southern east side of Market Square, you will find Bremen St. Peter's Cathedral, built in the Gothic style. The cathedral was built in the 11th century and was refurbished during the period from the 13th to 16th century. The church stands out well in the city with two iconic Gothic style bell towers at an impressive 98 meters height. You can access the inside for free to see beautiful vaults and Gothic styles. Hey. <laughs> I'm traveling with uh, my Korean friend called Danny. Are you enjoying planning so far? Yeah. Yeah. Like uh, the weather is very hot, but except yeah. that everything it's is okay. <laughs> yeah, it's really hot, like 37 degrees. Beside the cathedral, there's an interesting spot that's only known by those who are in the know. This small stone in the cobbles of a cathedral square is called a speeding stone, obviously because people speed on it. But don't think that people are doing it to be rude. Actually, this stone was set into the pavement to mark where an infamous serial killer, Geshe Gottfried, was executed. Between 1813 and 1828, she murdered a total of 15 people with arsenic, although her motive was never discovered and it's still subject of a debate. People show their contempt for her by spitting on the spot where her head fell, a tradition that continues to this day. Of course, I follow the tradition too. Your mouth is so dry? Yeah. <laughs> Good job. Yes. This is a small street called Betuerstrasse. The walls here are built of red bricks and the street is filled with unique stores and shops selling all kinds of goods. I've never seen someone making a candy like this. Me too. This is Snow Quarter, the oldest neighborhood in Bremen. The narrow, colorful alleys are just wide enough to walk through and see the old houses. These small corners are full of vintage charm, complete with rows of chairs, flowers, and plants along the old walls. 
But actually, this wasn't always such a charming place to be in. Situated right by the river, this area was where the fishing community resided and used to be one of the poorest parts of the city. But today, it's considered to be one of Bremen's most beautiful spots. Bremen's main tourist area is quite compact and we could see the main attractions in only half a day. So we went out to explore its neighboring city, Bremerhaven, which is an amazing museum where you can experience a trip around the world. It takes about 30 minutes to get to Bremerhaven by train. Although this beautiful port city is not very famous for tourists, it's home to important and unique museums and cultural organizations. One of them is Climate House, which is the first museum in the world to address climate change. The theme of the Climate House is simple, yet clever. The museum takes in a journey around the world on the 8th degree of the longitude line, eastward from Bremerhaven, through the equator to Antarctica, and back again via the other side of the globe. You can feel the differences in temperature and humidity at each travel station and gain insights into the different climates of our planet. Our journey just started. Uh -huh. Yeah. At the beginning, you will watch an opening video that introduced the protagonist of this journey, Axel Werner. By following his track in the journey, you will relive what he experienced in each country. The first stop you reach by train is Switzerland. Many of the items in the exhibition, such as the cowbells, are originals that Axel has brought back from his trip. Here you can learn about people's existence with their livestock in the mountains, try whooping like Swiss people in a sound studio. And touch a glacier. Oh, it's really cold. After getting through the glaciers, we arrived at the next stop, Sardinia. Okay, so now we're going into the world of insects. Here you are shrunk down to the size of an insect, so you can explore Sardinia's microcosm. Yeah, it's hotter here than that mountain's area. Not only was there a big butterfly mode flying over our heads, but there were actually real live insects in the lizards displayed as well. It's hot, of course, because we were in Africa. This is Niger. Here you can people into daily life in the Sahel zone with a huge desert. Cameroon, on the other hand, has a lot more greenery. As I feel there, Cameroon has a hot and humid climate with an abundance of water, making it a paradise for animals and plants. Going south from Africa by boat, you know where you will end up next, Antarctica. After being in Africa, the climate of the South Pole was extremely cold. You can hear Axel shivering in his tent as well, because temperatures of negative 70 degrees Celsius are not uncommon in the Antarctic. It's so cold! Let's move on. Yeah. Oh, it's cold. It's so cold. <laughs> when we arrived in Samoa, a turquoise blue sea, white sandy beaches, and palm trees welcomed us. It's very, very humid. Like I'm already sweating. 
you can dive into a unique underwater world to see lots of colorful exotic fish gliding through the coral reefs off the coast. You are also reminded here that this paradise will be lost forever if concrete measures for climate protection are not taken soon. After getting through Alaska's wild and beautiful nature on the Halogen Islands, we were back in Bremer Haven. I couldn't show you all of the exhibit in just this one video, but they shared so many messages about climate change. Some local people in the interview were talking about how their lives were influenced by climate change, and the exhibits demonstrated how some countries are in serious danger. I think it's a very interesting museum, so if you have a chance to visit Bremen, I recommend going a little further to this museum in Bremen Haven as well. Thank you for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, please thumbs up and leave a comment. Also, if you want to see more travel videos like this, don't forget to subscribe. Thank you for watching. Bye.